2012. Before joining Hiawatha, Eli was a founding dean of curriculum and instruction with Uncommon Schools in New York. Prior to that, Eli taught for six years in New York City at the elementary and middle school level. Eli was a 2003 Teach for America Corps member in the Bronx. He holds a BA in government from Harvard, a master's in education from Bank Street College, and a master's in educational leadership from Brooklyn College. Eli grew up in Minneapolis and lives here with his wife and two daughters. Please join me in welcoming Eli Kramer. Thank you very much, everybody. It is a real honor to be here, uh, to be with the Rotary Club, and I want to build off something the last speaker just said, I do not envy your decision. Uh, what, a, what a great process uh, to bring all of you together and think about three great organizations uh, doing good work. It's a good problem to have better than the alternative. Um, I wanted to start, if I could, with a little sort of interactive activity. I'm not going to force you, but I'm going to give you an option to, to buy into this, if you're willing. Uh, to stand up, if you're willing, and I'll tell you what's going to happen once you stand up. I'll tell you who you are and why I'm asking you to stand, and then what comes next. So let's see how many we get here. <laughs> Members of the Rotary Club opt in to, fun, to things like that. So uh, it looks like there are about a hundred people in the room, more or less. Uh, imagine that you all represent all of the students in Minneapolis from low-income communities. Uh, that there, there are a hundred of you, there's about 20,000 students in Minneapolis from low-income communities. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask some of you to sit down as we go and I'm going to tell you why you're sitting down. Okay? Um, this looks like about two-fifths of the room and so this is about three-fifths. If, if from here over could sit down for a second. <clears throat> you all stay standing. We were we were a hundred percent of the students from low-income communities in Minneapolis to start. Sixty of you are not going to graduate from high school. Sixty out of hundred. That's the current reality in Minneapolis today. Is that forty percent of kids from low-income backgrounds graduate from high school? Twenty more or so of you sit down. So maybe table one, table two, table three, if you could. You all graduated from high school, but you did not enroll in college. In Minneapolis today, kids from low-income backgrounds, only 20% go on and enroll in any kind of higher education. Community, college, bachelor's degree, uh, certificate program, any, only 20% today, and this is in Minneapolis. Uh, and if one more table could sit down, maybe you folks sit down, and so we're left with about 10%. You folks, congratulations, you are the 10 that graduated from uh, a higher education program. 10% of students from low-income backgrounds in Minneapolis graduate from any kind of higher education program. Sit down. Congratulations, you made it. And now, one, one more time, if you could all stand up just for one second. At Hiawatha Academies, the organization that I have the privilege of leading, our goal is to have 100% of the students that walk into our doors, all of whom, 98% of whom come from low-income backgrounds, to have 100% of our students graduate from college and serve the common good. That is our goal. Can sit down. How do we do that? How do we, how do we, in the reality as it currently exists, flip this completely on its head and make it so that a kid's background, a kid's demography, does not equal their destiny. I just want to share a few thoughts, and then I want to share how a partnership with the Rotary Club could help us in a, in a very significant way. The first thing is that it starts with high expectations for every single person that walks in our doors. That's high expectations for ourselves, high expectations for our principals and our teachers, high expectations for our students, and on that one I want to stop for a second. Part of what I believe happens for too many kids today is that because of their background or the color of their skin or their income level, the expectations that we all hold for them in public institutions is not high enough. And what we start with is we believe, we believe at our core that every single child can succeed, can graduate from high school, can graduate from college and go on to serve the common good. A second thing that we do is we're in school a lot more time. 
we spend about 40% more time in school. If, if children are coming in and they need some extra love and they need some extra time, we believe that that's part of the formula. Uh, a third thing that I wanted to share is just a, a focus on people. Uh, we spend a lot of time and energy trying to find the best people to teach our children, to tutor our children, to lead our teachers, uh, because the, we, we believe we are in a people business in, in, in running schools. Uh, really briefly about us as an organization, we have been around for eight years. We currently uh, have three schools, two elementary and a middle school. We're opening our high school next year for the first time, so we'll be four schools next year. We currently serve about 900 students, and over the course of the next three years, in the context of this potential partnership, we will be doubling the size of our enrollment to serve almost 1,800 kids um, in the next three years. Um, our first students enter ninth grade next year for the very first time. In other words, our babies have been growing up with us in our school system. They started as kindergartners and first graders seven years ago. They'll enter ninth grade for the first time next year, and then we picture them at Hiawatha in just five years from now, walking across the stage, grabbing a Hiawatha Academy's diploma, dropping the shirt, the t-shirt of the college where they will go off and attend with a crowd, with people in the crowd just clapping them on and saying, you can do this. Uh, that's kind of the vision. How, could, how can we engage you? How could you support us? First, I want to talk about on the volunteer front. If you uh, are, are a person or know people who is able to make a regular commitment to volunteer work, we could welcome you in, for example, as a reading buddy to work with a child who's behind on reading or as a lunch buddy so that you could be a professional mentor to a student who, who will benefit from exposure to the world outside to the kinds of jobs that exist. If you are a person who is interested but not but can't make a regular commitment, uh, you could welcome our students to your office, to your network, so that they get exposed on maybe a one-off basis, once every couple months or once a year uh, to get exposure to, to the world outside. Uh, and thirdly, we are an organization, we have 100 staff, about 60 of them are teachers, and of course we try to coach them to be the best teachers they could be, but that means about 40 of us are doing other jobs where being in touch with a lawyer or an architect or a doctor uh, any of the other professions that are represented in this club could benefit us in the way that we think about delivering on, on our mission uh, uh, to help every single child succeed. Lastly, on the, uh, on the financial front, I do understand that the club is thinking about making an investment, and I just wanted to share, um, if you were to uh, choose Hiawatha Academies, what, what kind of thing would an investment of financial resources go to? Uh, I want to share two things. We are opening our high school for the first time and it, for example, will not have any technology equipment. It won't have a technology lab when it opens next year. Uh, a, a gift from the Rotary Club could help us in a snap put up a technology lab that would help every single student have access to technology uh, and, and that we believe is a critical part of their ability to go to and through college. Uh, second piece uh, to consider is uh, a college fund. One thing that we know to be true is that when students are on the doorstep of getting ready to go to college, they need to go visit schools, they need to go visit college campuses, they need to uh, take tours, they may need uh, financial aid to help them apply to colleges because there's usually a $55 or $75 application fee. And as a public school that gets funds for operating our schools from the government, from per pupil aid, they don't give us money to actually help our kids apply to take their, their ACT or apply to get into college or go to visit college trips. Because of that, we are going to be establishing a fund that will support the students that need support at that stage of the process so that there's no uh, barrier at the end of the line to them being able to enter college, graduate from college, and serve the common good. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your invitation to be a finalist in this process. It's been an honor and with such esteemed colleagues at the other organizations as well. Good luck with your decision.